Um, it, uh, less than two weeks from now, on the 28th um, of September, write this down. Um, at 8 o'clock at night, I'm going to give an update netcast. Anybody's invited. As I said, we're in now to very some very, very troubling times, and I feel that this update is an important one because, you know, we we're going to do it after the, the classes were all over, the online classes in, in the, the first week in October, but I realized I'm leaving for, um, for Australia, I think it's on the 7th, and that's kind of cutting it close to put out an emergency broadcast or a broadcast or whatever on the 6th. But it's on the 28th, it's a Friday, it's going to run 8 o'clock at night till whenever it ends, and I've got a lot to talk about. And uh, again, um, right after that, that weekend is part two of the edible medicinal plants, that's live from the field. And then October 1st through the 5th, uh, every night, like this one was, uh, eight to whenever, is beyond the final oneness. Now, I, when I wrote that class up, I said, if you have to ask what the title means, then you don't apply for the class. This is meant for people who have gone through the route of getting into the silence, uh, the completed self, um, and to that point of final oneness. It deals with the next immense step. So this is where you just go way outside the parameters of the self. And this is where I believe the real teachings begin. Like I said to you a few days ago, I finally got groups of people that I can take to the higher levels of teaching and it's only happened after the last, uh, you know, few meetings we had with the uh, apprentices and the, and the various keeper societies. But anyway, if you know what that title means, beyond the final one, this is a big one, a really big one. Um, the other thing I wanted to say before we begin this is... Um, you know, North and South Carolina are being hit very, very hard. We've got a lot of brothers and sisters who live down there, and they're going to need your help. Reach out. If you know anybody from North and South Carolina, they, even if they're outside the most destructive zone, they might know of people that you could pray for at the very least. But it's time now we have to help each other out because, as you see, these storms are getting a lot more violent. And to look at the trajectory of that storm, it is so unique in so many ways uh, that it's absolutely frightening the way the weather has gone, just as Grandfather had said it's going to do. And this is only the beginning, only the beginning. The other thing is, um, for all of you, thank you for, my, for your prayers for my brother. He's out of the hospital, and the operation only took four or five hours. Um, he's home, but he's on, flat on his back for the next two months. They had to do bone spur grinding, and they had to skin graft the bottom of his feet. So he's having a tough time, as if he hasn't had a tough time all the way up to now. He just, thank you for your prayers. He came through it very, very well. You know, he, I was raised, well, at least until I was 10 years old, in a very strict Protestant type of church or chapel or whatever. So I had no knowledge of other religions. And, you know, in Grandfather and his teaching. He would bring in everything from all sorts of religions and how he would use examples from every religion or belief to point out the same theme. And one of the things we were talking about dead trees and death in general 
And he said, he pointed to a beautiful pine. And he said, many people will look at that pine that was once beautiful, living, growing, and be saddened that it has passed. And he said, that makes no sense. He said, what you must grasp is that nothing lasts. And that's when he brought in the Buddhists' impermanence. Meaning, one of the primary teachers in, in Buddhism is to get the realization that one of the reasons people are unhappy is that we tend to cling to and covet things that won't last. People die. Circumstances change. Trees die. And when you can understand that nothing lasts, you don't base your happiness on things that won't last because he said that's why people are unhappy. Because as soon as that fades, they become unhappy. And he said, realize that all we have is the now. And get a visceral understanding that nothing lasts. And then he brought us into the false gods of the flesh. He said that people only work for four things in life, no matter how you look at it. Peace, love, joy, and purpose. And he said you cannot find any of these things outside of yourself. But he says in the great societies of the world, we are trained that that is the only place we can find those things, that peace, that love, that joy, that purpose. And all the time, is it, it is inside of us. And there's so much unhappiness in the world because we lie to our children. We say bigger jobs, bigger bank accounts, bigger cars, bigger houses, that's going to bring you happiness. But when people get these things, they remain unhappy. And grandfather was quick to point out from the very beginning that these riches are found within us. That happiness, joy, peace, love, purpose is all inside. 